In 1924, Walter P. Chrysler founded this great company, and he said, I'd like to build a better engineered and performing automobile for one half to one third the cost of my competitors. Walter Chrysler really started out as an engineering guy. He wanted to understand what makes a car good. He bought a car and completely tore it down as a young man just to learn about it. He built it back up, made a product, the Chrysler 6, and he couldn't get his car into the New York Auto Show, and so he rented the lobby of a hotel and showed his car to everybody and created a great stir. I always think of that as setting off the heritage of the company on a very unusual footing and going your own way. This company is not afraid to take risks and take chances, and it shows in our product. We're going to try and provoke people's emotions with our design. We have quite a track record of doing things that other people just haven't done. We cannot allow the automobile to be a commodity. It can't be a vanilla wafer. We never, never set out to win everybody over. We set out to create something that people will look at and say, boy, that's really unusual, that's different. We believe in cars that have great proportions. Without a good package, without a good proportion, you can't make any car look good. This car behind me has great proportions even to this day. The 300 has phenomenal proportions, you know, great uh, front overhang, great short rear overhang, long hood, short deck, low roof, I mean, those things will look good forever. Fundamental to good design is styling combined with excellent engineering. The whole engineering heritage really began with uh, what was called the Three Musketeers, which was Fred Zeter, Carl Breer, and Owen Skelton. They were hired to help with the Chrysler 6 and really became the core of our engineering. When I think of the airflow in 1934, that vehicle was so far ahead of its time. With that car, we were able to set a whole bunch of land speed records because of its aerodynamic shape and really showed to the industry how much that matters in cars. Obviously, Virgil Exner had a great influence on Chrysler cars in the 50s and 60s. Every time I look at one of the cars from the 50s, I say, what were they thinking? But in a good way. And I was like, wow, look at that fin on that car. Look at that chrome. In the 60s, it was push-button automatics, which was something that was a neat and novel then and starting to make a little bit of a comeback right now. I remember when the LeBaron convertible came out, and it really restored America's love for convertibles. Creating new segments in the marketplace is really part of Chrysler's heritage and something that we're very much dedicated to. When Tom Gale came on board in uh, the late 80s and early 90s, some great things started to happen. PT Cruiser, the Pacifica segment busting cars. Companies are competing, you know, harder than ever now for the piece of the pie, so to speak. And design is the answer, I think, for that next, how do you define yourself in this crowded marketplace? One of the things that really makes, I think, Chrysler Group stand out is that from an engineering side, we very much encourage the design office to, to push us a little bit. So when we create something different and unique that really pushes the envelope, engineering's there to help us. Of the most recent uh, engineering innovations, one of them that I'm most proud of is the Hemi engine. In and of itself, it's a great engine. It really does everything well. It's matched well to a transmission. But then you tie that to a heritage of great engines, and people remember that aura, that allure, and it brings all that back with them. There's always just something that's a little smarter, and that smart, it isn't just limited to the fact that it's engineering and design, it's also value. We think that resonates with consumers, the fact that they can get more value out of their cars. We try and have a lineup that either has more space, more cargo, more speed, more style than anything else in its class, but at an affordable price. That's the promise that we try and fulfill everywhere we are. SRT really is unique in the volume segment. We put a 6.1 liter Hemi in it, and what differs from the 5.7 street Hemi is uh, all the typical type of hot rod tricks. We lower the suspension, we put 20 inch wheels and tires, a chin spoiler, a rear spoiler for better aero, whole lot of touches, upgrade the suspension, Brembo brakes for great stopping. The package that's just phenomenal. Following up from 300, the next generation Sebring sedan and convertible I think will be very dramatic looking vehicles. It is a work of art. It's just beautiful. The detailing, the way the body side is stamped. I mean, how could sheet metal do that? 
as much as the 300 did for the full-size category, the Sebring is going to get us back into the game with more style, more quality, more performance, but also at great value for money. When you see the next generation minivan, you're going to turn your head. Someone who could care less about minivans is going to say, wow, that's got to be the best looking minivan I've ever seen. We invented the minivan. We now have all of the major competitors participating in that segment. We need to take it to the next level. Adding style, adding passion. I think every new product we'll be doing the same thing, really working through the details, sweating the details. And if you do that well, you can distinguish yourself as a car company. We're not going to get drunk on a little bit of success. I think we're all going to stay very hungry. I'm here to build great cars. We have more than enough talent with design, with engineering, with manufacturing, to be able to bring forward products that fulfill that promise in every single category. I can't wait to see how far we can go. And I think people are at least now listening to us and starting to pay attention to the Chrysler product. So we have to deliver.